Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. You've been searching in the dark, your sweat soaking through the floor. Doing a movie musical is one of the hardest things you can pull off in the business. And it's really about the director. And I just worked with Michael Gracie just before I was discussing this project. I worked with Hugh on a commercial seven years ago. That was the first time we all worked together. And on the last day of filming, we wrapped high fives, hugs, and I said, uh, we should do a film together. But by this stage, I'd been shooting commercials for about 15 years, and every time you work with a film star, that's what they say during the rap party after a couple of drinks. He goes, yeah, whatever, Jackman. I said, oh, fine, you don't have to do a movie with me if you don't want to. And to this day, he reminds me that I was so nonplussed about his idea of making a film together. But in my head, I thought he was just like everyone else, and he isn't, because two weeks after, I got this script, and it was The Greatest Showman. Mr. Barnum, I can't just run off and join the circus. Why not? You clearly have a flair for show business. Show business? I've never heard of it. Because I just invented it. I spoke to Hugh and I said, if you're going to be so bold as to write the greatest showman over your face, then you really should play to your strengths. And to me, that is one of the main reasons why I wanted this to be a musical. Our goal at the beginning was to seek out the best writers in the industry who are writing for Adele, Bruno Mars, Sia, you name it. And there were these two unknown guys and each of them was sending in songs. But we had a clock going and someone was leaving town in like four days. And it was like, before that happens, we're gonna write two songs for this film. We had to do it fast, and we were, we were working on it. We started working on it on the plane. We had to have it completely written by the time that we got off the plane so we could record it the next day. <laughs> now, somewhere in there after that, they then got hired to do La La Land. They started to get known. Uh, they won the Oscar for La La Land. They developed Dear Evan Hansen. They won the Tony for Dear Evan Hansen. Now they don't talk to me, but that's fine because they created this incredible music. You could re-record any of these and it, it, it could go on the radio, you know, as a pop song. And I think that that's kind of cool because it blends then and now. All I want is to fly with you. All I want is to fall with you. Benj and Justin's music, it's catchy. Every single song that they wrote has a specific meaning and a, and a specific way it's done. So why don't we re I've never seen a love song like that, you know? And I think that's what's great about what, you know, what we're creating. The Greatest Show has to have a unique style visually. This has to have spectacle. Our job is to set the whole environment that the film takes place in, and we have to create this world of wonder. I'm trying to hold my breath. Nathan and Crowley, I worked with on The Prestige 11 years ago, and I have tried to get him to work on every single movie since. Nathan's rich detail of authenticity and colours, it's, it's incredible. The way that he sees the world is kind of like Barnum. He can picture what that world can be. It was all uh, incredibly beautiful and all very tactile. Everything you can see, you can, um, you can touch, you can really experience the design rather than just having to imagine it or having it recreated by a computer later. Yeah, the overview of New York in The Million Dreams, we kind of skim over 18, mid-1800s New York and we find the rooftops. All of it was designed in 3D first and then 3D printers printed the miniatures and then traditional artists painted them and we lit them on set and we shot them and they're some of my most favorite shots in the film. The look of it in lighting terms is, has been great to be so encouraged by Michael who said, be brave. Although it's a period film and it's set in the 1800s, I think what Michael has always wanted to achieve in it is a real vivid contemporary vibe it should feel very relevant to the here and now. We're 
consciously using camera movement you might not see in very many period films. I'm running with it. The costume designer had a very, very challenging assignment here of bringing a kind of a contemporary flair to a period piece. As a costume designer, this is better than anything that I could have ever dreamt of. Well, the costumes are very eccentric, to say the least. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's really cool. Like, all the costumes are, like, custom-made, beautiful and detailed and colorful. And, and when it all comes together, it all seems to make sense. Obviously, with the oddities, everyone's unique. I think Ellen really brought to life these characters. Come alive, come alive. I just love what she's done with the costumes. They just look absolutely beautiful. It's so contemporary and it feels really fresh, but still have a kind of period feel to it. There's one girl, Martha, that wears this gold. It's just beautiful. We have an oddities team of up to 12 people each, a circus team of six, six to, to eight, eight each, and on the big background days, we have 30 to 60 additional hair and makeup people. You know, Michael pulled us all aside and said, everyone here, the theme of this movie about oddities in that everyone has something to add. Everyone is part of this family. There's no one more important than the other. And what P.T. Barnum does is he takes these people who are invisible to society and he pushes them into the spotlight. And he actually manages to make them a part of the society that he, that he has built up for them. The biggest breakthrough for really anyone in the movie is the moment that you realize that you don't have to live within the boundaries that everyone else has set. Barnum, he was a little bit of an oddity himself growing up. He believes that what makes you different actually makes you special. We worked really hard on the dance. I don't know if you've ever met any choreographers, they're very kind, but when you get in the room, there's something kind of sadistic about them and they really love to punish you. <laughs> this was some of the most technical choreography I've ever attempted in my entire life. It was tough to work on. It hurt. It hurt. It hurt. <laughs> you know, those down ups, man. It's hard on the body. They're like athletes, really. Dancers have this energy, and especially knowing that it's film, film's for life. So you don't want to watch it back and be like, oh, yeah, I was tired that day. You just push and push and push. I did things dance wise that I've never done before. Honestly, I've never thought that I would be flying around in the air. <laughs> so this is definitely a new skill that I've acquired for this movie. I'm no longer afraid of heights. <laughs> I kind of had to get over that the first day. We ended up doing some pretty crazy acrobatics. You know, Zendaya was remarkably skilled at trapeze by the end of this movie. It's a lot, you know, and it's, it's definitely a challenge. It's definitely something that has pushed me. It's definitely something that I can say that I can do now, um, which feels really good because I, without this, I wouldn't have tried that. I wouldn't have stepped outside of my comfort zone or really took it, taken it to that level. And now I can sit back and watch and see, you know, that that's me. That's not a sun double. That's Zendaya up there doing that, you know? So it, it feels really good. Can't stop us now. I'm really sad it's over. I'm going to miss the whole cast. Let's give it up! Michael Gracie. His vision is incredible, but his determination is like nothing I've ever seen before. I've been a part of the magic on set, and that is completely different to any set I've ever been on. I'm so happy to have been surrounded by such talent. The whole thing is just amazing.